Now this is uh, a little a typical layout. Um, this is your header line, guys. And um, here's, here's this, these are the, the drip lines, or laterals. And he's got two per bed. Uh, and we'll talk about spacing and uh, number of, of uh, laterals to use, drip line per bed, based on the width of the bed a little later on. But that's what most of them are going to look like, right? You've got a header line at one end. Sometimes you can split the middle. It, sometimes you'll have multiple zones. It just depends on what your needs are. But that's just your no-frill system right there in terms of how it's hooked up, how it would look like in your garden. All right. When you design the system or when you're laying the pipe, before you buy the pipe, please understand that there's only so much water that you can get through any particular diameter pipe. Now, this is the standard. And you look at that and you say, a half inch, I can get more than three gallons a minute. Yes, you can. But when you, the more you put through a half inch line, over three gallons, you're starting to incur pressure drop through friction loss. There's, the water should move in a line only so fast. So that's, that's the idea. Now, uh, it is permissible to extend that a little bit, but you have to understand uh, what your limitations are and do a little bit of homework there. So that gives you just kind of a, a general idea. Now, note, if the pipe is going to be over 500 feet, you need to bump up to the next size, okay? And that will help you when you turn the thing on, you'll actually get the, the amount of water and at the pressure you need at the very end of the line. And you won't be going, what? What happened? Okay, follow the rules. All right, let's look at the different types of emitters. This is drip emitter tubing. This is the most popular. Uh, for, for micro-irrigation. Various types. We have two types here. We have tapes. They actually come in a, a spool and they lay flat. You put pressure on them and they swell up just like a regular tube. And then you have the actual tubing. The, the wall thickness of this is anywhere from 20 to 40 mils. Uh, this is going to be anywhere from, I think, 6 up to, well, gosh, there's goes 20, 20 mils or so. I mean, there's some heavy-duty tape, too. The reason we use heavy-duty tape is we want more than one year service. This will give us, I've had some of this the last 10 years, if it's taken up and cleaned out. The emitters are actually embedded in the tape. They're glued in the tape. And I've got a emitter out there on the table, glued in the tube, rather, as it extruded. This you can see the little tortuous path here. That's actually made in the, the plastic when it's extruded. Okay, it's not separate. It's just actually formed as it's being extruded from the extruder. This is all polyethylene. Both this emitter and the emitter that you see right here in the swelling, they're all tortuous path. That means that when the water enters the chamber in that emitter, it runs through this labyrinth. And as it runs through there, guess what? When it hits all those walls, it's losing Fresh, thank you. And so when it gets to the emitter, and there's a little hole somewhere, well, we have had to put water in them, right, to see where it is. It just drips out. So it enters at about 10 PSI, anywhere from uh, 6 to 15 PSI, and it just drips as it goes through that torturous path. Really, really a neat development, okay? And you can guarantee that if you stay within the, the design specs of the, the material and you don't run your length too long, every emitter will be accurate within probably 5%, okay, from start to the finish. Now, how many of you have used that, that uh, soaker hose you buy at Walmart, whatever, it's just rubber, it's just like crumb rubber, okay? What's your experience with that? Stops it stops up, but have you ever turned the pressure up Mm, so so, and you got a 50 foot run. Where's all the water come out? At the start. At the start. It's junk. Right. Now, if you, if you feed water from both ends, you'll be okay for short runs. And people do that. But it still stops up. And I've tried, I've even been where, 20 years ago, I went to the manufacturer in Dallas that started making that stuff. Oh, I was, you know, oh, this is great, great. What, we didn't, what he didn't tell you is, you know, the other problems, hydraulic pr the problems they have with it. You can, this stuff is accurate. Use it if you want uniform growth, okay? Any questions about that? So the drip tape comes, here's the operating pressure from 6 to 15, flow rates. This is the most common, about a half 
gallon per emitter per hour. Drip, 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 okay? It's what makes it so wonderful to use. Anywhere from 6 to 18 inches, 12 is the most common, and that's what we use. Uh, wall thickness, a mil is one thousandth of an inch. It's pretty thin stuff, but it's strong. If it's, keep the pressure, you know, 10, 15 pounds. If you put 100 pounds of pressure in it, it look like a balloon, and then it'll blow. And then the length of run, guys, if you'll keep your, uh, your run, just about any usage, you can keep the run shorter, up to 300 feet, you'll be fine. Some of this is designed to go further. We'll look at some of the hydraulics of it uh, just a little bit later, but 300 is what you know, I feel safe telling anybody. Now the drip tube, here's that emitter, see it in there? Uh, it's actually glued into the hose. Perennial crops, excellent for berries, brambles, blueberries, and there are folks using these in orchards, even on pecans, subsurface. Charles will talk a little bit more about some of that later, later on. Uh, operating pressure, a little higher, isn't it? A little thicker wall. The emitter spacing, 12 to 60. See, this, this is what makes it really good for these uh, brambles and cane berries and blueberries. Just really good stuff. You leave them there. Leave it in the field, because they're perennial crops. Okay, and then uh, berries, depending on the hose diameter. Generally, it's not quite as long as a tape, but they make some of the stuff that's pretty good size diameter now. All right, so when you design your system, remember, it's nice to uh, run the dripper across, the lines across the field or down. Don't run them up field, why? Up elevation, up slope, why are you not gonna do that? That's right, you're gonna lose pressure because you're fighting elevation, fighting gravity, right? Now you can do it if you got short runs, but it, it, when you can run it the other way, just do it, okay? If you have areas of the field at different elevations, just treat them as different zones and with their own regulator, their own uh, you know, uh, manifold, whatever. Uh, that way you'll have less problems and you'll have more uniform growth. And you're not trying to you know, chase rabbits everywhere. And then base the length of row on the performing char performance characteristics of the tape. Let's look at some of these. This comes right from the factory, right out of the uh, manufacturer uh, table. Notice the slope. As we, as we go down, we're gaining gravity. Look what happens at different pressures. We're gaining length, aren't we? And as we go up, whoops. And this is these characteristics of that type. So, yeah, it really, you know, follow what the manufacturer says and you'll be fine. Now, with uh, the dripper tube, as you increase the pressure, like most things, you can increase the delivery. 12, 18, and 24 inch spacing at 12, you increase the pressure, you can increase the volume. To a point, you get too much pressure, especially uh, uh, com in combination with flow, then you lose a lot of uh, energy from friction loss. So it's got to be designed right. And if when you go to put this together, if you have any questions, you know, go back to the manual. By the way, that manual is the best manual that I've seen available free. It's online. I thought we'd go ahead and print, print out one for you. If, you, if that doesn't answer it, uh, you know, there's not a lot of people in your neighborhood that's going to know what the answer would be, okay?